Hello, welcome to the Art Column, a YouTube channel dedicated to exploring, discovering, and sharing the art world in America. Today we're in San Antonio, Texas. I can't even say enough good things about it. Look at this amazing art. We have an amazing guest. What is it called again, David? Well, today we're going to go see the Olmos Art Walk. coming in. I'm Jorge Garza and I've been living in this neighborhood for, for 12 years and uh, this is like the 11th year that we've had this, this art walk and it's an opportunity for the artists that live in the, in the neighborhood and we have quite a few artists that live in this neighborhood to kind of share their work with the community. It gives us a chance to show off our, our, uh, our neighborhood as well as our artwork and it's, it's a lot of fun because we meet such great people. Do you think that community is an important part of the art process or the art world in general? Well, I think, I think first of all, uh, an artist has to be in, in contact with, with his community. Uh, you know, these, are, these are people who at some point will be supportive possibly of, of their work and of, of uh, the, the kind of direction that they're going in. So I think that there has to be this connection. And you, when you mention support, um, does, is the art meant to support or to be supported? Well, I think, I think what, what every artist needs is they need some kind of, of gratification, whether it be a sale, of course, but I think more importantly, I think they just need to see that they're connected. I like these bowling balls. Yeah, yeah. And my wife Marcia said, no, let's put it in the garden. And so that led to this. So it's kind of cool. It's great. It is great. I just, I love the, you know, the sphere as a, as a form. And uh -huh. I just, I just think it. Okay, here at the art hall, we kind of see um, art as a, as a journey. Not, not strictly a, a destination or a definition. What kind of art journey are you on? Well, you know, that, that is a, it, it continues. What I'm looking for is to keep fresh with my work and by, by investigating new directions with the same medium that I've been working with, it takes me to other, other levels. And it's something that keeps me wanting to produce because of that, because I'm always looking for the next. Um, so this seems to be like a very much of a traveling kind of pattern. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your numbers and maybe how you got to the conclusion of showing art this way? Well, the, the, the idea of the assemblage is, is I've always loved using artwork both in a, in a two-dimensional and a three-dimensional form. And I love using found objects and incorporating them into painted surfaces. And these found objects then become repurposed and have given, are given a new life. Beautiful works of art. Thank you, exactly. And they in themselves have stories that one can then begin to kind of investigate and and maybe even make up and and make their own stories yeah. so one particular direction using objects leads to another I find I find objects that lend themselves for example in this series over here I was inspired by some Native American fabrics that I saw uh, in Santa Fe and found this farmers cutting tool and I just thought it would just blend right into the stripes of these Navajo patterns. And that's what led to this particular series that you see here. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Absolutely, um, Joseph. We thank love, you. We love your yard. We love your space. We love your presentation. Well, thank you. This is Sabra Booth. She's an artist in San Antonio. She does printmaking. She does all these fantastic, like, putting pieces together. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your work? Sure. Right now what I'm working on is an animation um, called Slick, and it's about the Gulf oil spill. It's a sardonic look at what happened in Louisiana and in the Gulf of Mexico and Texas in reference to the oil spills. And I take ideas from the Godzilla films from Japan, uh, except I'm using the copper tone uh, girl who becomes a monster and I take you on a journey. People watching this, what, what is printmaking? Well printmaking entails uh, two aspects. One is, is that you do not work directly on the surface like the paper. You make a matrix, a plate, and then you print off of the plate. The second major difference with 
printmaking and other art forms is you do an addition where you don't just have one, you have multiples. And in that sense, it's a very democratic art form because I can charge a lot less for my prints than I do for my one-of-a-kind pieces, such as my drawings. And we all love that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, here at the art column, we kind of see art as a journey, not necessarily a strict destination or a definition. What kind of art journey are you on? Where do you feel art is taking you? Well, that kind of ties into what like Picasso said about art is about ma asking a question, not necessarily giving an answer. So with this particular um, animation, I'm, I'm really not trying to be preachy or, or any of that or say, well, companies should do this or that. I'm just saying, I went out to Louisiana. This is my response. Where in Louisiana? Grand Isle. Oh, awesome. What were you doing out there? Um, getting chased by the army. Um, I lost a camera while I was... I shot some images of the beach. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. The Coast Guard came after me in a golf cart. But, um... So it seems like it's taking me on all kinds of journeys. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Well, awesome. Definitely. Well, we really appreciate you sharing with us. Sure. Um, sure. Is there any place that some of the viewers can maybe, like, look up your work? Like... Sure, at the, uh, Café Artiste. Oh, at the uh, at San Antonio Santa. Museum of Art. Right. Oh, awesome. That place is amazing. If you've never been, go. Absolutely. So great. Thank you. So as we continue our journey at the Olmos Art Walk. Hi. Hi. My name is Laura D. Schultz, and I do art in cut paper. Uh, there are several different traditions around the world that do paper cutting as an art form, um, but in English, that's what we call it, just paper cutting. Awesome. What do they call it in German? Scherenschnitte. <laughs> what do they call it in Poland? Wishinanki. What do they call it in Japan? Kirigami. <laughs> yeah. Well, here at the Art Column, we call it art. Um, at the Art Column, we kind of see life and art as a journey, not necessarily a strict destination or a definition. What kind of art journey are you on? Definitely an autobiographical journey. All of these pieces are have say something very much about where I am, where I've been, where I'm going. Um, they are they really do fall in the kind of the category of being autobiographical. Awesome. And artwork? Like okay. Would you like to see some large pieces of artwork? I have some large yes, pieces. Yes, we of would artwork. definitely like to see some okay. large pieces of artwork. You can touch it. Um, I like it hanging in the air. You can kind of poke your fingers right through it. Um, it's uh, the way I prefer for my paper cuts to be displayed. I don't like them behind glass that much because there's something about the air moving through them and around them that it kind of um, allows the viewer to be aware of their fragility as well as sort of the power of having something really large like that. So um, I'm aware, however, that people want to protect their artwork if they buy a piece, which is why a lot of the pieces that you see outside are going to have glass in front of them because it's a safer thing for people maybe who have children or cats or other kinds of creatures around that might <laughs> insert fingers and pull. Um, but I really do prefer them uh, myself here in my own house, um, kind of out in the open to kind of, you can kind of experience them on a more human sort of scale. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. Not a problem. Wesley Harvey Ceramics. So how did you get started in art? Uh, I was ceramics is art, right? Yes. Okay. I was a math major who took a ceramics class. Oh, awesome. And what is it. ceramics? Uh, using using clay, either sculptural or functional, or both. To make art. Yes. This is my functional side. Fantastic. I do sculpture as well. And who is this young lady? Jimena Marine. Hi, Jimena. So it looks like you're, you're making some sort of scarves for your finger? Exactly. They're like little sweaters for your fingers. And how does one get involved in finger scarf making? I like the drawing. 
process of knitting, so I was trying to go as small as I could, and I started trying to knit with um, toothpicks, and uh, as you can see, there's drawing. Wait, you're knitting with toothpicks? Yeah, right here. Oh, awesome. So how did you get started in that? I started working with uh, the process of knitting on drawings, sculptures, paintings, and as I took out my wedding ring, I decided to start creating small pieces like to compensate, and I wanted to use a ring for baking, and a ring for rusty maid, and the ring just for relax. And we love her dearly. Instead of the no, wedding ring. Her away. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I already told her. Uh, long term, I guess. Yeah. So I started creating yeah. this and yeah. adding some yeah. 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 feathers. Wonderful. Well, here at the art column, we kind of see art as a journey and not necessarily a strict destination or definition. What kind of um, journey are you on? Where do you see that art is taking you? <laughs> It's always a uh, challenge. Right now I'm at the point of transition. But I will say it's always making me question a lot of things that happen in my life. So, oh my god. <laughs> so it's always like a conversation with myself, I will say. That's the beauty of my journey related with it. Well, wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Well, so, um, how do you relate um, to the art world? No, okay, I said that wrong. Okay. Sorry, start over.